Felipe Gustavo has one of the most insane tray flip ever and the reason I say that is because he's one of the few that can pop his tray flip up high and do it into ledge tricks like a, a crooked grind for example. When I was at Street League in Salt Lake I saw him just casually doing tray flips like so low and fast with just no effort at all. He's figured out something with his scoop that allows him to really control his tray flip and at the Street League in Lake Havasu I was actually able to catch up with him and ask him about his tray flips what his secret is and here's what he had to say. What is it? So, uh, tray flip. So, how do you get your tray flips up? Because you can tray flip like crook up onto things. How do you get it up like that? Um, you know, everybody had their own different ways to do a tray flip, but I try to just poop it up, you know, with my toe. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't know. Um, so, like down and then like under and up? Under and up, under and up. Okay. Um, it's kind of funny. So in today's video, I'm going to be trying to incorporate this scoop up technique. I think I understand what he's saying. He's saying basically, instead of scooping sideways like a shove it, you want to kind of scoop in a direction where you're pushing the board forward, like the force is going underneath the board, where you're like popping it down and forward so that it kind of goes under and up. And this is a tip that I've been thinking about for a while but haven't really tried out. But I'm really excited to try it today because I'm going to try and tray flip the euro which I I've tried in the past but my board ends up hitting the step because I'm so bad at tray flips I have to use the bank to tray flip and even then I struggle to get the pop so today I'm gonna be focusing on getting that scoop like Felipe Gustavo and we're gonna do a few on the bump and then hopefully take it to the step up and get a clean tray flip up the step up today so that's the goal let's go to the skate park get a warm-up session going and then see if we can get some tray flips and work on that scoop under and up technique all right I'll see you there Man, straight up, this session had me losing my mind. Like, the session started off good, but that tray flip took forever. But I think I figured out something about Felipe Gustavo's technique of scooping up and under, and I think I have a better way of explaining what's going on. So here's my explanation. So. If you watch Felipe Gustavo's tray flip, his board makes contact in this corner with the ground, right about like that. So basically, when I do tray flips, I'm thinking of like spinning this around like that, like really scooping it. But instead of scooping it, what Felipe Gustavo does is the board turns a little bit crooked and then he just pops straight down. And what that does 
is it goes crooked and that kind of puts this part of the tail in the sweet spot. So that way when you push down, it hits this corner and then pops up and does the tray flip vertically rather than horizontally. So if you see my scoops, I have the habit of like really pulling my foot like across. Like you see, I like follow through big time this way. Felipe Gustavo, he pretty much just pushes down and it looks like the board just kind of goes diagonal and then goes straight down like that. So once it's partially diagonal, then you can just pop straight down and it'll hit that corner pocket and then do that perfect elevated 360 flip rotation. So from up above, basically, instead of turning like that, basically it's just a pop straight down. But before you pop straight down, you give it a little bit of a crooked like that and then pop. And you see how that makes contact right on that corner pocket. Another thing I noticed is when you really focus on popping tray flips, it's really hard to avoid stopping the board with your front foot. So when you push down harder with your back foot, your front foot starts to get in the way. So you need to basically get your front foot out of the way even faster the more that you pop it. So I have the problem with front shoves where the board will pop up way too high if I try and pop it at all with my back foot. So instead of thinking popping with my back foot, what I do is I think crouch down and then lift the front foot. Don't even try and pop it, just lift the front foot and that automatically transfers all the weight to your back foot. I think in one of my videos I called this like the release mechanism, but basically what made the tray flip start to click for me so that I could get it up on top of the euro and get the full rotation was to think, all right, I just need to get the board a little bit crooked and then just lift my front foot so that the board will pop in that back toe corner. I mean, that tray flip took me a really, really long time, but the good thing is I feel like I genuinely like learned something about tray flips. Like most of these tray flip videos, I go and it's kind of like a feel thing. I just like tray flip out of the bank. I tray flip a bunch of times. And it's like, yeah, I think I'm getting the feel for it. But now I feel like I'm starting to understand the scoop, particularly like being able to pop it up in the air like properly rather than just doing a floor scraper tray flip. Anyways, I'm curious to see what any of you that are watching this that have good tray flips, what your thoughts are on this idea of the board turns diagonally just a little bit and then you release and just pop the crap out of that back pocket. So it's not so much of like a big long scoop with your back foot as much as it's just turn the board slightly sideways and then pop straight down. And once it hits that perfect spot, the board just kind of rotates up and around. I think from watching Felipe Gustavo's pop, I think this is a good way of describing what Felipe Gustavo is doing. I'm gonna keep playing with it, but that session was a battle. I'm sorry to you people that were like there watching me, particularly that, that girl. I think your name is Kate. We talked the other day and you were like super, super nice. And then I was trying to tray flip and I was like in this like black hole in my brain, like nothing else existed. And this girl, she was like so nice. She was like gassing me up and I like didn't acknowledge her or like anyone like hardly at all. Cause I was just so focused on getting the tray flip. So hopefully but hopefully I didn't come across as like a jerk or anything, but I was seriously losing my mind trying that tray flip for like an hour. And you saw how many times I got close and like the board was right there or like I landed it just like sketchy or like I landed on it and somehow slipped off it. Like that tray flip was playing with me. Anyways, hyped I got it. The start of the session went good. Just did the basics on the step up. They were feeling pretty solid. I really liked that kick flip. And then afterwards I got a couple more tricks. I did that that crook on the ledge and then that kick flip on the hip. Just to kind of like mentally distance myself from the whole tray flip experience. Like it was so difficult and gnarly. I just kind of like wanted some mental release and like a little bit of a vacation from mentally from that experience. And I got home and I was like telling my girlfriend like I was cringing so hard because I was like so in this like primitive of state of like I gotta get this stupid trick and I was just ignoring everybody and ignoring everything just like trying to figure this out and uh, anyways she thinks I can come across as a jerk sometimes and if I did everybody that was there if you're watching this I'm sorry so I've been looking into uh, patreon when I started this channel I was doing like reaction videos basically like watch this skate video with me like when a primitive part dropped or primitive video I would like review it but eventually those were all getting like copyright strike and I like I almost lost my channel so I had to like take all of those down however if I were to do like a patreon I'm pretty sure I could make that kind of content of like me reviewing skate videos and 
kind of like watch the skate video with me on Patreon. So I'm not sure how many people would be like interested in just kind of like having me as a homie like watch videos with them. But this is something that I thought about for a while and then I found out that like Gifted Hater is already doing this. And so I thought, well, if my audience is down, I would love to do something like that. I don't know like how much I would charge. So I'm not even sure I'm going to do it, but if you're interested in that or you think it's a bad idea or a good idea, let me know in the comments below as well as like what you would pay to have like a friend <laughs> watch skate videos with you. That sounds so wild, but anyways, if you would be down for like a Patreon, let me know like some ideas. I don't think I would charge that much. I think YouTube would still be like my main thing, but I would try and post a couple videos on there a week maybe like reviewing to a part that came out on Thrasher or a couple parts or maybe doing like a, a trick tip because I personally don't feel like I should be putting trick tips out on YouTube because I don't think I'm good enough but for those of you that really do care about like my thoughts on tricks I could do that on patreon. I don't know. Let me know. I appreciate all your guys support I'm not like trying to like milk you guys for all your worth to try and like make money off of you But I am trying to like make a living for me and my family So let me know if you think patreon is a good idea, but yeah Thank you so much again guys for 10k for all your support subscribe if you're not make every day Friday And I'll catch you in the next video peace